wow, good job for still hanging in there. It only gets more and more exciting from here. We're just scratching the surface with the power that comes with being a web developer. But I wanna quickly talk about HTML versus HTML5. I've mentioned this topic a few times, but just kind of brushed it off and told you, yeah, this is HTML, yeah, this is HTML5, but I wanted to just take a break and quickly go over the basic concept of what HTML5 is. If you remember in our diagram, HTML, when it first got started in 1989 to 1991, it wasn't as elaborate. It didn't have as many features as it has now. We want to make sure that all these browsers play nicely and understand our HTML rules. So if you remember our friend Tim, our first web developer, the guy who created the World Wide Web, has a governing body that establishes what HTML should look like so that these individual browsers can know how to code their browsers so that it reads HTML properly. And obviously the web that we had in the 90s is very different than the one that we have now. So there's a lot of new things that we need to update. And some of those things are phones and we have tablets. And just overall, we need more power from HTML. So HTML5 was the evolution. And there were many, many evolutions of HTML. HTML5 is the latest one where we try to add on features so that we can improve the user experience. Now, what are some of those features? Let's take a quick look at our good old friend, W3Schools. One of the things that HTML5 wants to do is we want to make sure that it doesn't affect any old website. If you remember our very first website from Tim, maybe in 1991, well, that still works to this day. We visited it in the previous videos. You can still visit websites from the 90s because we want to make sure that everything is backwards compatible. That's a fancy way of saying older versions are not obsolete but we also want to tack on these features. And you can read on the website all the information of HTML5 and what it does and some of the things that it supports. And it does get a little technical and we don't need to get into it too much. But the one thing that I want to emphasize is that it introduced this idea of semantic elements. And what that means is they wanted to make websites more descriptive. Search engines such as Google go on websites and they use these things called crawlers to look through your website, these machines that are reading your HTML to understand what your website is, what the topic about it is so that they could rank it in search engines. And HTML5 semantic elements tries to add a little bit more meaning for these robots so that when they encounter something, it makes a little bit more sense. So this is an example of some of these new tags that HTML5 introduced. And let's show you a few of them. So for example, if we wanted to comment this out, we know how to do that already. And a semantic element would maybe look like header, where we have the title h1, which is register. And we close the header so that now the crawler knows that this is our header and maybe we have some navigation links. So now we can have a tags with our href and we'll just say that it links to Google. And then we close the nav. We only have one navigation link for now, but I just wanna demonstrate quickly. And finally, we have a footer. So within the footer, we can add something like website made with love. And you can see over here that this, even to a machine, if it understands what header means and nav means and footer means, gives a lot more meaning to the web page and it'll have a better idea of how the website is structured and where it should rank in their Google search results. You can take your time and read through some of these tags and I do recommend that you visit this website and go through some of the HTML intro 
you'll even see that if we click on input types, so something that we visited already and we scroll to some of the attributes, you'll see that there's some new HTML5, they have these little icon over here that have been introduced. So we're constantly expanding to make HTML better and better functionality. You can see here min, for example, we use that for password, if you remember, specifies the minimum value for an input field. So if I set a min over here, then it makes sure that I enter the minimum amount of value. But again, you can take a look at it yourself. The issue with semantic web is that it's still fairly new. So you won't see as much of this. You will on some websites, but it's very hard to prove that it actually has good SEO performance because it's still fairly early. But just so you don't get surprised and you're aware of what's happening, it is something that you might encounter. But overall, HTML5 tries to improve the performance of the web because we're constantly evolving. And just like websites need to go from simple HTML text-based websites to massive websites like Twitter that you can post and talk to millions of people around the world where we need our web technologies to evolve with us. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.